seated. All right, Brother Brown. Thank you. Good evening, friends. I'm very happy to be here again tonight to minister in the name of our Lord Jesus. So appreciate these wonderful songs of Brother Lease. And I heard Brother Baxter call me and said he was coming over, and I hurried over as quick as I could to get to hear some of it. Uh, singing like that, when you get up to heaven and want to find me, you get where they're singing like that, I'll be around somewhere. Because <laughs> uh, I sure love it. I've always told the people there's, after the, where the uh, waters come out from under the throne, it goes down here and passes the tree of life on either side of the river. It makes a bend and turns around a big hill like this. And the angelic choir is singing all day because there's no night. Uh, over there. And on this other side is a little bush. That's where I want to sit. I that bush and listen across at him singing. I tell you, I really like singing. You know, there's something about music and singing that brings the Spirit of God to the meeting. You believe that? That's right. I have um, been requested here that there's a, one of the most horrible polio epidemics that's ever swept the land in Geneva, Illinois. I think there's 19 cases and several of them is dead already. So pitiful, that horrible enemy. So I've been asked to have requests here for prayer for that, that God will come down in his mighty loving power and take that epidemic away from the country there. So now let us bow our heads and pray for that. Our dear precious Lord, we're so unworthy to come to you, but yet thou has been so loving to us the promises that if we would ask anything, you would do it. And that's the confidence that we come in tonight, confessing all of our sins and the sins of this nation, the sins of this city that we're speaking of. God be merciful and think of those poor little children falling with that horrible demon of polio. Uh, we know that thou can remove this thing. I pray, God, that, that there be an old-fashioned meeting started there, a prayer meeting all around the city. May the churches fall on their faces, the peoples, and go to screaming out to God. And I believe you'll stop the plague, Lord. That we want to say that our hearts are bleeding for those people, those Christians in that city and those poor little children. Oh, God, hasten the day that when all the curse will be gone away and there will be no more sickness, no more sorrow. We feel for those poor fathers and mothers tonight. I feel for them knowing an experience of of it, I, I feel that, Lord, their poor hearts are crushed. Be merciful, God. And I pray that the plague will leave this very night. May there not be one more case broke out. May it stop now and may the enemy be turned back and cast them to destructions. Grant it, Lord. May the angel of God stand over this city. We know that the demons will scatter 
when he stands and they see him. Grant it, Father. We pray you do this and beg and confess that we're sinners and not worthy of it. But we ask you to do it for the kingdom of God's sake. For we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. It's just so bad when poor little children have to suffer like that. Won't it be a wonderful day when that last enemy is put under his feet? Then we're standing in triumph, made in his likeness, lovable. And no wonder all the elders fell before his face, on their faces before him. Brother Ryan, it'll be a wonderful time, won't it? I'll be glad when it's all over somehow. You know, as you get to see the world getting wickeder and worse all the time, I think that John on the Isle of Patmos said, Even so come Lord Jesus. Kind of sick and tired of it, aren't you? I think of being separated and I get into a group of people. I get to see some friends and get to shake their hands. Farewell. Go somewhere else across the nation, down here and over there. And look on the streets and behold the sin and sight and it just kind of bleeds your heart and you, and you begin to see many of the people who once had experiences are beginning to drop back. Then you begin to scream, come Lord Jesus. Yeah. I guess we've all had to put up with that through the ages, the, the different ones. All down through the ages. Tonight... It's, I believe it's the hottest night we, they say, of the hottest day we've had in Chicago yet, in this hot spell. And I'm, I'm so sorry that I even have, would ask you to sit in the building here, and it's so awfully hot. I, I feel bad about it, but uh, we don't control the weather, you know. God does that. And again, I'm so grateful for you that your love has reached out to a place that you'll set in a place like this to hear the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray, God hear my prayer, that there will not be a person here tonight who will be missing on that day. I pray that every one of you will be there. And somehow, I'm just one of these old-fashioned type preachers, probably don't know too much. I don't. <laughs> I know I don't. But I believe that somehow or another we'll kind of recognize one another and know all about this somehow. Even I believe in hell there was a remembrance, Jesus said. He said to the rich man, remember, son, in thy lifetime, about Lazarus and so forth. So if there's a remembrance in hell, surely there is in heaven. <laughs> so I, I believe that God will, will let us remember. As Fanny Crosby, when she was, some critics come in, told her how criticized her singing Christian songs and so forth. Many of you know Fanny Crosby, know of her rather. That she was the blind poet, gave the world some of its best songs. Most touching altar calls that's ever been sang nearly was Fanny Crosby's Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, and all those heartwarming songs. And sometime, one time there was someone passed in and said, How would you ever know him? What if he over on the other side and you, there is such a place and you'll be blind over there? She said, I'd know him anyhow. I said, How do you think you'd know him? I said, I'd feel his hands. And then she turned and started to walk back to her chair, and that song came, I shall know, yes, I shall know him. You've heard it. Redeemed by his side, I shall stand. I shall know, yes, I shall know him by the prints of the nail in his hand. I believe we'll know him. It does not yet appear what we shall be like, but we know we'll have a body like his, for we shall see him as he is. Well, that, that's enough for me. Just to be where he's at. That's, that's all right. Have you ever had an idea of what you wanted to do when it was all over and you got to meet him? Did you ever think what you wanted to do? Here's what I would like to do. Get down on my hands and knees. 
and crawl up to where he's standing and just pat his foot like that. I'd be, if I'm with, then if he'd turn me away and send me away, if I'd go to hell, I feel like I've been dearly paid. That's right. For all the efforts, if I live a hundred years, if I can only pat his foot just one time, think of how, how wonderful what he is to me. And I, I love him tonight with all my heart, and I believe if, if he would cast me away, he's still just. And if I'd have to go to hell, and if there'd be such a thing as love in hell, I'd still love him. For what he's been to me, even now, besides what I know that he will be to me. And if I, I believe his gospel, if, if tonight a hundred people would raise up or a thousand people that died when... When Billy Sunday preached in this tabernacle and his converts and would come back from eternity and say, Brother Branham, you're dying now. Don't you trust that Jesus Christ because it's not so. And if I was dying, I'd still trust Jesus Christ. If I prayed for the sick tonight, a thousand people, all of them sick, and I prayed for the thousand people and the whole thousand died in the morning. Tomorrow night, I'd still stand just as I am now and pray for the sick, believing divine healing. Because God has said so in his word, and I believe it. Now, being it's so hot, we started just a little bit early. I want to talk to you just a few moments. And I heard him page Brother Tommy Osborne just a few moments ago. And I, if he's here, why, he's, if he isn't, he's coming back. If his brother's here, why, he's, he told me he was coming back. I went to his room the other night and he showed me some of these pictures from down in Jamaica and around. That little brother has really did some work for God. I love him. That's right. And if you, any of you pastors here, if my, if my thoughts of man are all right, if you can get Tommy Osborne to come to your church, he'll be a blessing for you. That's right. He's really a, a truly a Christian, a man of God. I seen him. I often heard that he never did touch people. He was one of my converts to divine healing. And he said he never touched people. I said, how do you do it, Brother Osborne? I said, I just tell them the word, have a prayer, and they get up and get healed. That's all. So have them pray one for another. And the other night I saw it on a little screen that he had there of where he just explained the gospel in a simple form that a child would, would understand it. And then he just said, now all of you bow your head and pray one for another. And he had a little, just a little couple minutes prayer. And I'll tell you, there was piling crutches and beds and everything else in the corners where the, they were healed. See, just simple faith. You can't do that in America. <laughs> no, no. But you can do it somewhere where they, or in the, in the lands where they haven't had so much confusion as we've had in America. Now, let's talk on the Word just for a little bit. I want to take a little subject here and use it, if the Lord willing. Found over in Exodus, the 23rd chapter. I'm a poor excuse for a Bible teacher, and Brother Ern Baxter and Brother Bose and those really scholars here, I feel very little to try to explain on the Word or try to preach. I'm not a preacher in the beginning. I guess I always said I was a spare tire. You only use them when you got a flat. <laughs> but we haven't got no flat tonight. We got plenty of unction, but maybe we'll just roll the spare a little bit. And you pray. Now, in the 23rd chapter of Exodus and beginning with the 20th verse, I wish to begin to read just a few verses. Now, this is Moses and God talking face to face. Now, there never was a man in all the earth outside of Jesus Christ that ever talked face to face with God but Moses. If there be one who is spiritual or prophet, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto visions and dreams. But as for my servant Moses, I talked to him face to face. Of course, he was a type of Christ. Now, the 20th verse read like this, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. I just want to read along a little bit as we talk. Now, I want you just to listen out close to the word, right close. And Father, we pray that you'll help us now, and give us of your blessing, and may this audience now 
without any divine or any other sign at all, may they just receive the word. You sent your word and heal them. And may the word of God find a place in every heart tonight. And may they be healed, everyone, both spiritually and physically. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This glorious book here, God is setting Moses now in position to tell him now what he's going to do for him in the journey. Set him here and tell him what he will do. And then finally tells him the blessings he'll have him in the promised land. Now all those types of old were, there were just shadows of things that was to come. Now I believe that was the church natural. The Jewish church that was brought out of Egypt to Palestine was the natural church, God's natural people who had a natural law, see? But we today are God's spiritual church with a spiritual law written on the tables of our hearts, led in a spiritual form. Now, they looked up to see where the pillar of fire was, the angel of the Lord. But we don't look today. There's just something happens that we know is there, see? Now, and all that they was, now they were the people of God. Israel down in Egypt were the people of God until they come out of Egypt and started towards the promised land. Then they became the church of God. The word church means called out. I love that separated ones God said separate me Paul and Barnabas to the work that I have called them now this the churches today many of them are looking for mixers somebody who can mix and maybe do a little this and that and a little recreation and golfing and maybe a few parties and so forth now the world is looking for good mixers but God's looking for separators for those who will separate themselves come out from among them my people that you be not partakers of their sins separate in Egypt when the lamb was offered God made a difference he separated the the Israelites from the from the Gentiles and made a difference in them and God's people is a separated people a holy nation a peculiar people odd strange acting so the world will never understand you so just don't think about the world think about God that's the main thing now how beautiful a type of Israel going down there I just love the old nuggets back there to get the Old Testament and bring them out and rub them over and look at it everything in the Old Testament type the new now as Israel made her journey going to the promised land it had three stages of the journey now, coming out of Egypt Kadesh Barnea the judgment crossing into the promised land and that's just exactly the three churches after the dark age the three churches see them then the next come the Philadelphian church then the next come the Lady Ossian church then she crosses over beautiful how that God in the old days when that pillar of fire was hanging over the camp of Israel they watched that and when the if it was hung there a day they stayed a day if it stayed a week or a month or a year but just as that pillar of fire began to move there's a thousand trumpets blasted and no matter if it was 12 o'clock at night or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, every Israelite broke camp, wound up his tent, put it on his back, and away they went. Yeah. Wherever the fire went, they went. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a good thing if we did that today? Yeah. Follow the blessing. Well, here it is. That is exactly the same thing that's taking place today. God, after the dark ages, in the great 1500 years of pagan persecution to the church, there was a man named Martin Luther. He saw that the just shall live by faith. He saw the pillar of fire. He sounded the trumpet. And away went the church following. But what happened to Martin Luther? He organized himself and got an organization called the Lutheran Church. And then they begin to get their creeds and doctrines and so forth and getting a bunch of men to discuss things and set their church in order. 
And the first thing you know, they got so ritualistic and formal until after a while, away went the pillar of fire. That's right. But Luther couldn't move because he already had his doctrine all drawn out and cut out and everything. And he was so organized until they, the church couldn't move. But there's a little boy over in England by the name of John Wesley. He saw it and away he went. He had a revival that saved England and brought salvation to America and helped the world at that day. Way he went. That was the Philadelphian age. And oh, what a time they had. He said, we got a new revelation. What is it? The just shall live by faith. That's true. But also, Jesus suffered without the gates that he might sanctify the people with his blood. So we believe in sanctification, the method they said, the second definite work of grace. And he caused a revival to sweep the whole nation. But the first thing you know, after John died and, and, and the Charles and Asbury and many of them, as soon as they died off, the organizations began to come in and organize the Methodist church until it was so organized, so tight, till it's either Methodist or nothing. So then the first thing you know, they got all down and a new crowd come up and another new crowd come up just like this, three or four rounds of the apostles. The first thing you know, it was all formaled off and setting over here, no spirit, and the pillar of fire moved right out. That's right. Methodists couldn't move, they was organized. We are Methodists. And the first thing you know, there's a group of people called Pentecostal. They got a new revelation. The Lord had poured out the Holy Spirit in a deeper measure, and they began to speak with tongues. And here they went. My, you talk about a revival. They had one. Yes, sir. Just let the Methodists sit still if you didn't want it. That's right. Well, it went on like that for a while, and the Pentecostals began to organize the assemblies of God, the oneness, the twoness, the threeness, the fourness, the fiveness, and no meat eating, and oh, oh my. First thing you know, they organized down so tight till they had begun to deny all the powers of God. God just set them right over on the shelf. That's the lady you'll see in church age, which is to be lukewarm. Just while the music's playing, clap hands and holler a little bit, the music stops, down it goes. I remember, brother, I'm your pappy or father here tonight in the pulpit. See, that's right. And what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And the Pentecostal is getting just as formal and ritualistic as any of the rest of them. That's right. But what happened? Brother, there's a group of people from all different denominations now is beginning to see that fire moving again. <laughs> They're leaving out. I mean, they are. God calling his church. And God, who is my judge standing here tonight, the best I know of the scripture, there will never be another church age organized. Jesus Christ will come take his church out. That's right. Moses was a type of the church, a type of the organization, the law. But Moses glorified himself, and instead of glorifying God as a perfect type before they crossed over into the promised land, and that's just exactly what Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecost, Lutherans, and all has done tonight. They're seeing who can have the biggest crowd or the best dressed or the biggest church or the finest pews. They're trying to glorify their organization until God's moved out. That's right. But remember, Joshua was right in the church all the time. He was the one who taken them over. And today, the very signs and wonders and phenomenals that's been in the church, every time they had a revival through any age, these signs has broke out in the church. And they've been all down through all these church ages, just like Joshua come with Moses all the way through. But the church age ceased with Moses, and Joshua tucked the children of God into the promised land. And I believe that the age has come now, the miraculous phenomenal the baptism of the Spirit and power and signs and wonders, this great pouring out of God's Spirit in the last days, and that's the thing that'll bring faith into the people, that'll take a rapture in faith, that'll take the church into glory. I believe it. How can the church be raptured when we haven't even got faith for healing? We've got to have rapture in faith first. That's right. How the God moves by His Spirit Signs and wonders begin to follow. Everywhere God begins to move, signs and wonders follows God. The world has always stood off and criticized it from, the, from Adam down. They've done it. Every time. 
And it's nothing new today that you should be criticized for accepting Jesus Christ and for his... Now, if you accept it in some fanaticism or are persecuted for the wrong thing, well, you deserve it. But now, look, if you have really... God is working with you, proving himself by Bible evidence of signs and wonders, then you rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Moses, in his journey, bringing the children of Israel, God gave him a promise. Now, as God led that in the natural, so is he leading the church today in a spiritual. Now, they were going to a promised land, out of a chaos, into a promised land, from the ridiculous to the sublime. Just like it is today, we're bound for a promised land. Do you believe it? Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Is that right? Yes. I'll go and prepare a place for you and will come again and to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. We're bound for that promised land. Hallelujah. Oh, how that thrills my heart. Yes. When I begin to see it, my shoulders are swagging down and knowing that I don't know how long now. I have no way of knowing that, but I know this one thing, that after the breath's left this body, if I'm true to Jesus Christ, someday I'll pass into that land yonder. Not long ago when Billy and I, his little bitty old boy, I never will forget it, was going down to his mother's grave on Easter morning. He's packing a little flower in his arm, and he took off his little hat. He's about eight years old, and he began to snub and cry, and he almost stumbled and fell when he knew his mother and little sister was in the grave. I put my arm around the little fella, set the flower down on top of the grave, a little old cheap flower we couldn't afford very much. I put my arm around him. I said, honey, the body of mother and sissy lays here in the grave. But let's not look at that. Let's look across the river yonder. There's an empty tomb in Jerusalem where one rose from the dead. And they died in him. And he said, those that are dead in him will God bring with him at his coming. Yes, sir. Someday that grave will open. Yes, sir. And that beautiful young woman, mother with her baby, walk out of that grave as certain as I'm standing this platform tonight. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Last words I said to her once she left, she said, with, on Pentecost and the power of the Holy Spirit, she was dying that morning and she said, oh, it's so glorious. Oh, how, what a, that's the way I want to go. <laughs> So wonderful. She said, I see the gates opening up. (laughs) How beautiful. If a man's ever going to be honest, it'll be when he's dying. I've watched him dying all manners. Then seeing that, she said, Bill, make me one promise. What? Said, preach this glorious gospel till death shall set you free. Well, that's been many years ago, and I'm still. Still on the battlefield tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. More determined than ever was in all my life. For I see we're bound for that land. Someday we'll enter those gates. God told Moses, now, before you leave, wish we had time to back it up a little bit. Pick up how they went out into Egypt. God prophesied through Abraham. Said his seed would sojourn in a strange land for, for 400 years. And then he would bring him out with a strong hand. How Moses went out into Egypt, brought them out. How before they got out, how they got down there. How Joseph, perfect type of Christ. How he was born amidst his brothers, hated of his brothers, loved of his father. Coat of many colors, distinction. Why did they hate him? Because he was a seer. He could interpret dreams and see visions. And they hated him for a just cause. So did they hate Jesus because he was spiritual. They called him Beelzebub. They hate his church today. Those half-brothers and sisters. Because of the Spirit of God that moves in the the born-again believers. And notice, for a just cause they hated him. Then they were supposedly to kill him and throw him into a ditch. He was taken up 
and set at the right hand of Pharaoh, as Jesus was taken up and set at the right hand of the Father. No man come to Pharaoh except through Joseph. No man comes to God except through Christ. Right. Amen. Watch him as in his temptation in the prison, there's a butcher and a butler, and or a baker and a butler it was. One of them was lost and one of them was saved by Joseph foretelling what would happen. And Jesus, when he was on the cross, there was a thief hanging on one side and a thief on the other, one lost and one saved. Right. Perfect. Oh, we just can't keep and notice he went away from his brothers because he was rejected and married a Gentile bride. Yes. Rejected by the Jews, Jesus received a Gentile bride to fulfill the scriptures. I'll take a, a people out of the Gentiles for my name. There you are, yeah. living right in the end time now. The shadows are falling everywhere. Oh, I think of it. And I think, what can I do, dear God? My heart burns when I see the great need everywhere. Yeah. Screams and calls come to Macedonia everywhere. What are we going to do? Then I think, this Lord, I'll do the best I can wherever I am. To try to throw out a lifeline to the unsaved and ungodly. But I'll tell you one thing, friends, it is not fair to, for all preachers to stay in America here and preach the gospel over and over and over and over to people when there's half of the people of the world, nearly two-thirds of them has never heard the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Yes, sir. And we've just stayed in one huddle here and preached it to you, gospel harden them and the heathens out here are dying. Yes. That's my vision. I must go to them. There's where God is blessed because they're hungering. They're thirsting. They want to hear something. That's why I'm so with Tommy Osborne. He's got the same vision. Get the gospel out. We got to. God's going to hold us responsible for it. The journey's on. Now I notice God told Moses here, said, I'm going to send an angel before you to keep you in the way. I love that. Amen. Now anyone knows that that angel that met Moses or guided Moses was the angel of the covenant, which was Jesus Christ, the pillar of fire. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same angel leading this church today. Let that one then. Hallelujah. Oh, don't get scared. Hallelujah means praise our God. He's worthy of every bit of it. <laughs> yes. And I look at him and I said, now wait, I'm going to send this angel and he will guide you from this time until you come into the promised land. And God give us the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost that's guided the church from that day until we enter the promised land. Amen. Watch him, he said, beware of him and provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. Yes. Sure it was, the angel of God, Jesus Christ. The same one that leads the church today. He was in a pillar of fire then. He's in the form of spirit now. But it's the same angel. Yes, okay. Same being. Yes. Now, let's notice a little bit. Then as soon as they got started on their journey, the first thing you know, they begin to complain and murmur. About the, this water was no good. And about their bread they were eating. Complaining. Chiding against God and against Moses. That's just the very typical part of the church today. No matter God can come down and pour his blessings out upon the church, bless the people. And the first thing you know, if you don't keep that blessing of moving and a going every night, the people go to some little disaster come along, they'll go to falling back. Well, maybe I was just excited. Oh, where is your faith? Hold it in God. You never feel it again or see it again or anything else. Keep your faith anchored down there. How wonderful. Watch him now. They got down there and got into some trouble. They began to want some water. God told them, said, for he would supply their every need. The angel would lead. And Moses told him, said, gather all the Israel out down earth, and I'll show you the glory of God. God told him, said, gather them out and speak to the rock, and it'll bring forth its waters. A people complaining had left the garlic pots of Egypt to eat angels' food and was complaining. <laughs> Had left the muddy waters of Egypt to drink from the rock, the fountain that never runs dry. <laughs> waters that angels couldn't touch. And yet complaining. 
that left the boasting physicians of Egypt to be with the great physician and still complaining. Isn't that just like people? That's the way they do it. Still complaining. So God told Moses, speak to the rock, and the rock brought forth it. And the rock was the driest place there was, the driest thing in the desert. If they had searched through all the puddles where there was water, through the oasis where the waters was, and still no water, then speak to the rock, the driest and farthest away from water there was, was a rock. Well, it was laying up on top of the ground. But God said, speak to the thing that looks the worst. The rock. And sometimes today they say, well, if God would give gifts, he would put it in the Vatican City. He would put it in these big cathedrals. Why he wouldn't put it down a bunch of bunch of holy rollers? But that's just where you're fooled. (laughs) That's right. The worst place in the world, God has put his blessing. That's exactly the truth. Speak to the rock and it'll bring forth its waters. Now I want you to notice. He said, now, if thou will indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy to thy enemies and an adversary to thy adversaries. Listen close now. For my angels shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites, Hadonites, Persianites, Canaanites, Havites, Jutites, and I will cut them off. Now, could you imagine, God said, there's a land over there that's flowing with milk and honey. And I'll give it to you. It's yours. But now, before you get into it, you've got to cut down all the Havites and Juvenites and and all these other different knights and knights before you got to it. Now, that was strange, wasn't it? Now, the people today, that's the same thing. God has given you a promise of divine healing. He's given you a promise of divine health. He's given you all these promises. But you're afraid to face the enemy that's trying to buck you off from it. That's exactly the right. God said, don't you even bow down to him. Look here. And thou shalt not bow down to their gods, neither serve them, or do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Oh, my. Look here. There's a promise out there of divine healing. There's a promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Before you ever get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you may have to cut through the Methodists, the Baptists, the Presbyterian, the Christian Science, and everything else. But if you're ready to go get it, it's out there for you. God promised it and sent it to you. Amen. Look, I'll give it to you. The land's over there. But before you get there, you've got to fight. That's what's the matter with people today. They're straight afraid to stand and fight. What we need is... I must fight if I should reign, increase my courage, Lord. Must I be carried home to heaven on a flower bed of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? No, I must fight if I must reign. That's right. Oh, we're so wishy-washy, boneless and helpless, spineless as worms. I think of old Buddy Robinson. He got out of a cornfield. He said, Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost, when you come back to earth, you're going to find a pile of bones laying here. If we ever get that sincere, something's going to happen. He said, Lord, give me plenty of knowledge and a gable into my soul. Let me fight the devil as long as he's got a tooth in my mouth and gum him till I die. And that's what he did. God, help me, help you to have courage and stand out there. God said it so others are getting it. Let's us go get it. It's ours. God promised to us. What do you say? But look here. What will my church say? What will my pastor say? What will this say? What will my mama say? What will this say? No matter what they say. God said utterly to destroy the thing. Amen. Hallelujah. What we need today, you're a baby and sissy around with a whole lot of things you ought to be destroying. Well, I'm afraid to testify of healing because when mama takes me down, the pastor will say, well, now, if he goes starting that stuff around here, we'll put him out of the church. You know what God said? Destroy that thing. Get it out of your mind. Get it out of your way. Amen. Don't think I'm excited. I know where I am. Look, I'm just feeling good. (laughs) All right. Let me tell you, my brother, I know what I'm speaking of. I've had experience. And a lot of people try to whine around. Well, if I kind of baby just a little bit while the neighbors will kind of, well, poor Mrs. So-and-so, I guess she's down at the healing service, but I know she's still, yes, ma'am. Oh, destroy that thing. 
Love, pick up that little old juvenile baby. Say, he's so cute. He grins so little, uh, so sweet. He's a little uh, Habite baby. I just tell you, the Bible said destroy that fellow. Yeah. Not pet him and baby him. He'll raise up and be just like his daddy. And the first thing you know, you go to pet your sickness around and pet your little petties around and things like that because your neighbor don't believe in healing and your neighbor don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Destroy the thing. Let's go over and take the land. Hallelujah. Yeah. God said it's ours. Yeah. If he said it's ours, it belongs to us. The promises are to you and to your children and your children's children. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. That's what's the matter with the church tonight. We got a wishbone instead of a backbone. What we need is something in there that'll stand you up. Amen. Amen. Yes. Every man that ever mounted to a hill of beans had to fight for what he got. That's right. God don't give it to you on a silver platter. He said, there's the promised land. She's flowing with milk and honey. But before you get there, you're going to go through all these Habites and Canaanites and everything. But don't you bow to one of them. You destroy the things as you come to them. Stop building a fire on the enemy's altar. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wish I was twice my size. Right now, maybe I feel twice as good. Let me tell you, brother, I'd almost have to be to feel it. Listen. That's right. We want to utterly destroy. There's divine healing. But the first thing you know, Miss Jones don't believe in it. Well, set Miss Jones to one side. Yeah. The pastor don't believe in it. Set the pastor to one side. That's right. Destroy those things. The doctor says the days of miracles is past. I believe in doctors. I find more believe in doctors than I find believe in preachers. That's right. Yeah. More doctors believe in divine healing. But there is some of them. They got some quacks. We got them on both sides. <laughs> That's true. But let me tell you, that preacher or doctor or whoever it is that don't believe that Almighty God can do all things, set it aside. God is Almighty. We're Christians. We believe the truth of God and we must stand for the truth of God and we must live the truth of God. And every promise is ours that God gives to us. Let's go get it. Amen. Amen. Some of them say, well, you know, Mama belonged to this church a long time ago. Get rid of that thing. But don't take God's word for it. Crucify the thing. Turn the altar upside down. Let's worship God. No matter, I always say it's so cute. They got this big fine. I don't care what they've got. If it don't compare with God's word, get rid of the thing. Amen. We're on a road. Hallelujah. Yes, right. Glory. Yes. Holy Ghost is moving on. Signs and wonders are following. Yes. Demonstrations and powers of God. Healing. Yes. That's me. That's what I like. Amen. Amen. He who the Son has made free is free indeed. Yes. Amen. No yes. bondage, no yes. Free in the liberty or Christ has made you free. Yeah. That's right. Knock that little Havanite out. The little Jubite, take that little Canaanite and kick him away. Don't let him live. Kill him. God said kill him. Destroy him. <laughs> Not just my dear little friend. I'll be back to see you again as soon as this revival's over. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Don't ever do that. If you do, you'll never get the promised land. Brother, take out the sword of God and go to fighting. Whew, wish I had a long time to stay on that. I got some more thoughts moving up there, but I want to get down here where he gets them into the land. Hey, Amen. Let's read a little farther. Don't bow down to them. Don't serve them. Destroy their images. You shall serve the Lord, your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness out of the midst of thee. God said that. If God said that in the type of the journey, how much more he is he in the actual journey? <laughs> if a brass serpent would take the sickness out of the midst, what will Jesus Christ do? And Jesus said as the same reason, a compound reason. Moses lifted up the brass serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man. They were sinned against God and against Moses, and they were sick because they did it. And the ant of the type taking away sickness, what will the ant of type do? If a brass serpent did, what will Jesus Christ do? He said, as the Son of Man, as Moses lifted up the brass serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, I'll bless thy bread and water. Oh my, that's all right, bread and water. And boy, that would sure hurt our American prestige, wouldn't it? It sure would have used down with bread and water. I heard a Finnish sister today singing a song. She works for our share of translating letters from Finland here in Chicago. 
And she said, a little song, she said, a man in Finland came down with a little salt and some bread and he, and a, a horse trough to drink from. And he lifted up his eyes and gave thanks to God for the bread and salt and the horse trough to drink from. And we rake out enough food in the garbage can every Sunday afternoon to feed the people. Oh, we're really, I think about feeding like that about when the Hebrew children was down in the fiery furnace. Or when they first went out into the Babylon. You know, God looked, looked down, he seen he had a man down there he could trust for the name of Daniel. He had three more, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he knew he could trust them. So the, he told them not to, how, what the, the laws they must do while they were down there. And Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. That's just exactly when you say you're going to do anything, go to accept your healing or you go to accept your, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's when the devil flies on you with all four feet. <laughs> that's right. When he got down there, he said what he was going to do. The king come around seeing this excellent spirit in Daniel. So he said, now you put them fellows over there and feed them. I guess the doctor come along and said, now look, they need plenty of vitamins. So I tell you, you got to give them some wine and some hard drinks and some uh, uh, fattening things, a whole lot of calories in it, a lot of meat and a lot of stuff. The king said, I'll feed them off my own table. But when they come down to old Daniel, hey man, <laughs> they met somebody there that loved the Lord. Yeah. The guy come in already and said, now looky here. Said, here's a dish. The king sat down and said, just look how it looks. A great big gobbler full of whiskey sitting on it. Said, now the king wants you to be happy, so he's just going to give you some of this now. Keep you stimulated up. He said, I, I just won't drink it. <laughs> Boy, he said, I'm afraid for my own life and yours. Said, I'll tell you what you do. Said, you just give me pulse for 10 days and then look me over. <laughs> Amen. Otherwise, a little linen, linen, some corn pone or whatever you want to call it. Just give me a little of it for 10 days and then examine me against the rest of them. Brother, I'd rather have a little bit and be in the kingdom of God and doing what God wants me to do and have a whole lot and be away from the kingdom of God. I'd rather take my way with a bunch of little holy rollers and live in the presence of God than to belong to the biggest church in Chicago and be out of the kingdom of God. Amen. What's the matter with me tonight anyhow? Yeah. Let me tell you, my brother, what we need today is a good old time St. Paul's revival in the Bible, Holy Ghost, back in the church again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They fed him this stuff for 10 days. The little pot of peas or what it was. Nothing in it at all to make you fat. First thing you know, they brought Daniel up. The rest of them, they looked all the boys over. When they brought old brother Daniel up, my. His cheeks as rosy, as just round and fat as he could be. <laughs> Hallelujah! But say, I believe every time they set that little pot of peas down before Daniel, that God just reached over and got the vitamin bottle and poured the whole thing into him. Amen! Hallelujah! He still got him in glory tonight if you'll keep his commandments, do his will, follow after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and seek to serve God. Amen. Oh, I feel good. Look, brother, God just fed Daniel with some kind of a vitamin, but I can see him standing there just as round and fat as he could be. I can hear one of them say, say, that guy hasn't had too much to eat. I just give him a corn pone every morning. That's all he had. But God said, here, I'll bless your bread and water. I'd rather live for God and have bread and water than live for the devil and have fried chicken and ice cream three times a day, wouldn't you? Sure. Yes, sir. Daniel was just as fat and round as he could be, you know, his cheeks just as rosy. He walked up there and said, yes, sir. Your honor, sir. Here I am. <laughs> Looked him over and said, my, he's done out, growed his clothes nearly. Eating a pour of corn pone every morning. My, how God will bless. Listen, brother. Don't desire the big things of this world, but be satisfied with what God's give you. The only thing to be is be sure you're in the will of God. Yeah. I see the other three. Let's see what their tests come one time. Let's go to burn them up one morning because it, they wouldn't drink the king's wine and bow down to his images. Let's take a little look at that for a few minutes. I see it in Babylon. It's getting up in the daytime. Old king had said anybody that won't bow to that image will be thrown in the fiery furnace his head. Hotter than the Gospel Tabernacle in Chicago. All right, said it'd be seven times hotter than it's ever been hit. Ever who won't bow to that image. Well, these boys turned their back on him. I already said I'm going to throw him in the fiery furnace. I can look down at Babylon that morning. Amen. 
I can look, I can see the whole sky red. The King Nebuchadnezzar had himself a seat sitting out there, you know, as it was, his legs crossed, said, bring out them holy rollers. <laughs> out of them. Brother, you can't make fire fight fire. The Holy Ghost is fire itself. That's right. Said, bring them out. And we'll burn that religion out of them. We'll make them bow down. I can hear Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego starting up that gang plank there, going to drop off into the furnace. I hear Shadrach say, Brother Abednego, yes, Shadrach, you sure you prayed through? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure it's all right. Yeah, that's the victory. All right. He said, hey, you want to take it back? He said, our God is able to deliver us in this fiery furnace. But nevertheless, if you don't do it, we'll not bow down to your image. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'll not bow to your image. They walked a few feet farther. My, looked like God was unconcerned about it. I can see the man with the spears. The intense heat was just about to get them. It's about to suffocate. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, kind of fainty like, walking on up, hands tied behind them, going right into the fiery furnace, taking the last step of the way. I can see them now where they're just about, let's dramatize this a little. I can see them where they're just about one step from going into the fiery furnace. The only person gets in a hurry is you and I. God takes his time. As long as he's promised it, that's good enough. All right, I can see him right up there, almost ready to step in the fiery furnace. And look, it looks pretty bad for believers there. There the old king sat and said, well, we'll stop them holy rollers around here now. We got her all under the situation control now. As soon as they hit that fiery furnace, the rest of these guys will see that. They'll know where I'm boss around here. But brother, there's another boss that sets up out in heaven yeah. who knows all things. Yeah. Let's turn our face towards him now and see what he's doing. You know, all the time there's anything going on down here, there's something going on up there too. Did you know that? Yeah. Let's look. I can see him sitting on his throne. My his great robes hanging around him. I look coming up to his right. Here comes an angel. You believe his angels in heaven? Yeah. There's a great fellow come there with his sword drawn. His name is Gabriel. He stood up before the master, bowed his head, said, Master, I've tried to obey you ever since you created me. But have you looked down in Babylon this morning? We got three believers down there that absolutely are true, genuine believers, and they're fixing to burn them up. Let me go down there. I'll change that scene. I believe he could have done it. <laughs> yes, sir. I can hear the master say, Gabriel, you're true. You've been a real angel. You've done everything I told you to do since I created you. But put that sword back in the sheath. I can't let you go. Hey, Gabriel, sheathed this sword, stood attention at his side. Here comes another angel. What's his name? Is that Wormwood. He's got control over all the waters. He falls down before the master. He says, Master, have you looked down at Babylon? They're fixing to burn up three believers down there this morning. That's holding true to God's word. Look at them. Well, I'll tell you, if you just let me go like you did when I give me the power to destroy the Andalusian world, I broke up all the springs in the deep and I sent a flood that destroyed the whole world. What worm in heaven, you'll ask control of the waters. He said, I'll go down there this morning and I'll wash babbling off the face of the earth. I believe he could have done it. Amen. I sure do. I hear him say, what worm, you're a good angel. You've obeyed me ever since I created you, but I can't let you go. But he said, Lord, have you considered? Yes. I've been watching him all night long. Amen. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Amen. Yes. I've watched him all night long. I heard him in the prayer meeting last night. I heard him when they prayed too and they struck heaven here with their prayers. I'm watching him. I know they got one more step to go. I've been watching them all night long. I can't let you go because it's a man-sized job. I'm going myself. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I can see him rise from his throne. His priestly garments drop around him. Walk out here to the edge of his big throne. Walks out here. Over in there stands a big white thunderhead. I can hear him say, come here, east wind, west wind, north and south. Amen. Everything obeys him. 
Say, get out of that thunderhead down there and ride up side of my throne here. I can see those winds get out of that thunderhead. Big cloud of come war over for the throne. He steps off on there, reaches up, gets a hold of zigzag lightning, and cracks her. And winds are like horses. Brother, he was on his road down when they made their last step. When he passed by the sea of life, he pulled off a palm down there. By the time they took their last step into the fiery furnace, there was a fourth man in there, one like the Son of God, fanning away. You know, he was like that. Why? Because somebody took God at his word. Hallelujah. Right down to the end of the road. God will be faithful. You quit your doubting. Give over, give up, let God. He said, I'll not give you the land in one year. For if I give the whole thing to you in a year, the wild beasts will come in and consume you. But little by little, as you're able, I will give you the land. Amen. Little by little, just as you kill out this bunch of Amorites, I'll let you move in and take over. <laughs> if you kill out this bunch of Hadites, I'll let you move in and take over. Somebody said, well, I got, I was prayed for last night. I had a crippled hand. The only thing I can do is wiggle my finger. That's as all the farther you spread out. <laughs> Brother, well, if you'll spread farther, you'll move your arm. As you spread in your faith, God will let you take over the territory. It's yours. God promise you your health again. Hallelujah. I feel good. Oh, God, spread me out. <laughs> Amen. Hey man, footsteps is, is victory. You told Joshua ever where the foot sold you your foot, try it, I'll give it to you. Footsteps was, was victory, brother. I tell you today, let's trot on the lands that God give to us. Divine healing, powers of God, everything. Coming into Christ is like going down to the big arcade down here. Going into a variety store. Just thinking a variety store size of this tabernacle. Yes, sir. I look all around, there's everything in here. The shelves are all full of nice, pretty things, and everything that I like, they're all mine. I belong to, every one of them belongs to me. I can go over and take what I want to. And Christ is our variety store. By one spirit, we're all baptized into one big variety store. <laughs> Amen. Anything you have need of, he'll supply it. If I need healing, I'll take it. If I need joy, I'll take it. If I need victory, I'll take it. It's all hanging around at God's big variety store. And I am possession and you have possession of everything in that variety store when you're baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brother, you talk about elbow room. <laughs> Let's take over. If you need healing, there it is sitting there for you. Just reach over and get it. You might have to kick over a few things here to get to it. Push through a few things, get to it. Go ahead and take it. Might have to get a ladder, reach up for it. But God's got a ladder there if you're interested in getting it. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my, give me oil in my lamp. Oil in my lamp. Oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me shining in the camp until the break of day. Amen. Yes, sir. Fill me with oil, Lord. Light me up with the gospel. Let me show light. Let every person in here tonight who believes God will, God has, God's give us the promise. Now he said, I'll take care of you, plumb through till you get to the promised land. God promised to heal our sickness and give us the Holy Ghost, give us happiness, give us peace of mind and everything until we cross the Jordan and her to enter into the great eternal glories of God. Hallelujah. I'm sorry I kept you so long. Oh, I just feel real religious. I, I tell you I do. Hallelujah. Go to call me Holy Roller anyhow, so you might as well get started now. All right. I haven't got no prestige. I was all lost back under Calvary when I accepted Jesus Christ and tucked my way with the Lord's despised few. I'm determined by the grace of God to go through by His grace. Preaching healing. Preaching all of God's redemptive blessings. He's here tonight. His spirit here. His glory is here. His power is here. His joy is here. His love is here. His power is here. His spirit is here. His servants are here. His word is here. He is here himself. Everything that he died for is here for you. You have need of anything? Let's just reach up and get it then. Amen. It's mine. When you, when you claim the promise, then that little habit will be out there. Just push him out of the way and take the territory and go on. 
Somebody say, now, you're testifying to something there's nothing to do. Just push him out of the way, crucify the thing, and move right on. That's right. For you're dead and your Christ is hid in God through Christ, sealed by the Holy Ghost. That's right. You're just as safe as you can be. Not a thing on earth to worry about. Do you believe it? Amen. Oh, how I would like to see the Holy Ghost come and really get a hold of this group of people right now. <laughs> Them few little old seeds, I'm a poor excuse to speak the word because I don't, I don't know what I'm going to say. I just have to preach by inspiration. When I see it coming, I just reach and grab it and throw it out to the people. So that's a, and my, all my heads and hate and carry and fetch and tote. I, I can't help that. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, I might not be able to make this flower to some of the other fellows, but I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I know it saved me, it healed me, it took me off of a dying bed. It fills my heart now, it gives me happiness and joy. I'm satisfied, hallelujah, with Jesus Christ alone. Amen. The Spirit here. Anybody wants to be saved, you can be saved right now. Anybody wants to be healed, you can be healed right now. Do you believe it? How many believe that? Raise your hands. You believe that God is present to heal. Now, thank you. Then you listen to me just a minute. Jesus Christ is here and will make every person in the building well if you'll believe it right now. If you'll accept it right now and say, Lord, I now accept it as my personal property. I know I have the Holy Spirit. I'm into your kingdom here. I'm in your great variety store. And I have a right for healing. And I'm just going to walk over here, step up on the ladder, and climb up and take it off and come on down. And there ain't nobody going to tell me nothing about it because Jesus Christ has done brought me in here and said all these things is mine. That's right. The devil will stand out the window and say, hey, you can't do that. Say, you can't watch me. <laughs> Amen. That's right. See if I don't. Say, now, you better not testify you're healed before you feel something. <laughs> feel something. Brother, I believe something. <laughs> I believe what God said is the truth, don't you? I believe that His Spirit is right here over this audience. Frankly, I know it is. Now look, I could call a prayer line here and take a, another hour, two hours, if I could stand it and bring every person one by one by here. Your life, sins, or whatever it might be, could not be hid, you know that. But you don't have to do that. If you just have faith in God, God will heal you right where you're at. Don't you believe that? Watch. Look this way, everybody. I challenge your faith. I challenge you to believe Jesus Christ. I challenge you to take that word that he's just the same yesterday, today, and forever and believe it with all your heart. Do you do it? If you'll do it and be reverent and sincere in doing so, God Almighty will make you well. You believe that everywhere? Amen. Now, let's get quiet now before him and watch. Let's love him. The word has went forth. Now, the Spirit of God is in the meeting. It's been in the meeting. Now, after preaching, he'll come here, and if I've told the truth, he'll vindicate the truth. Now, if we call a couple people up here at the platform, you'd see in a few minutes, maybe the Lord will go to speaking, telling the people, I don't believe you have to do that. I don't believe you have to have anybody up here. I believe if you'll believe it right out there where you're at now, God will do it right where you're sitting. You believe it? Amen. Pray. Ask God and be sincere and see if God don't do it. God, God's under obligation to it. Now you pray. Let's just shut ourselves in now with God. Let the, all the outside world be gone. I say, Lord, I believe your word. I believe every word of it. And I'm now accepting it as my personal property. How many is doing that in your heart right now? Say, I'm doing it, Lord. I'm accepting as my personal property. I want you to be in prayer. Just look this away if you can. Just be praying. Say, Lord, give me a touch of your blessings. Help me, O oh, eternal God, to be thy servant. And just let the Holy Spirit move. God, be merciful. Just look around this audience. Everybody in dead silence. I know the Lord is here. Do you believe sitting there with your tie loosened up, sir? You believe with all your heart? With your hand, yes. Of course, I see you got a trumpet in your ear, haven't you? It's got deaf ear. I can see that, yes. Uh -huh. You got deafness in your ear. You also have another trouble, don't you? Besides that, you got cancer. Cancer in the stomach, is that right? 
cancer in your stomach. Will you accept Jesus Christ right now as your healer? You believe? Yes, I know I'm trying to get him to his attention. If I can get him this right, that deafness will leave him. I want you to see it can be done before he comes here to the platform. You, now, it's his individual faith. It's not mine. It's his. Now, I see what's happening. The man's going to die. Sure as the world's got a cancer right in the pit of the stomach. He's got trumpets. You can see them in his ears. A young man, you're sitting by him. you know him? Talk to him and tell him to accept Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. You can take the trumpets out of his ears then. He'll stand up and testify. You be talking to him now. Tell him to believe Jesus Christ. Accept him. And he can be healed. Amen. Somebody else believe. You believe? With all your heart, mister? That's your wife sitting by you, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, you've been healed before. You had something wrong on a breast or something. Is that right? You got a throat trouble now. Is that right? You and your husband both put your hands around one another and pray, Jesus Christ will make you well. Colored lady, just wipe your face there. You believe me to be God's servant? The little lady fanning with the... You believe with all your heart? You do? Believe God will heal you? Make you well? Female trouble. But Jesus Christ can heal you if you'll believe it. If you'll, if you'll ask him, have faith in him, he'll do it. Do you believe it? All right. God bless you. I want you to start praying. Some of the rest of you believe somewhere. Sitting there on the front seats. Do <clears throat> you believe? Is that your husband sitting next to you there? <clears throat> you believe me to be God's prophet? Or his servant? I got a balling out today for somebody to tell me I, I announced myself as being a prophet. Maybe I don't want to offend you. I'll say his servant. A prophet is a preacher, friends. Look this way, lady. It seems like you got sorrow or something. Yes, it is your husband. He's got arthritis. <clears throat> I see somebody moving. Yes. You believe with all your heart now? Believe God will make you well? You do? Didn't you just have an operation, lady? What? With a colon or something, another something in the colon. It was, was it? Uh huh. It was a. Uh, Something taken out, a cancer, something taken from the colon. You've had some trouble, haven't you? You've had a lot of fight trying to get here or something. Or see, you've been troubled in the road, haven't you? <laughs> believing? Lady with your hand up, do you believe with all your heart? <laughs> That's right. Did you ever find that pocketbook there you lost? <laughs> you didn't. All right. I hope you find it someday. God bless you. That's truth, isn't it? You see, now be, be, be faithful. Now, lady, you believe out there, there's another lady sitting there, you're trying to find out something about it. You've got a loved one that's sick, a mother. That's right. You believe? Have faith. God will heal her. You just believe with all your heart. Believe with all your heart. Lady there, do you believe with all your heart? She's a Jewish, isn't she? Isn't she? She has cancer of the bone. Isn't that right? You want to accept her he healing for her now? You believe it? she'll get well? Or won't you bow your head and pray? What's the matter with you people? Don't you see that Jesus Christ is in the room? His power is here to make well? Somebody in here believe. Have faith in God. Lady sitting right there with a the book in your hand. You're sick. You need healing. You have diabetes. Is that right? Jesus Christ will make you well if you just believe it. <laughs> Amen. Just be praying. Have faith in God. <clears throat> I, I can't hear you, sister, in here. It's my ears especially at this time, you see. I know you're talking, but I, <clears throat> that bowel trouble will leave you a little preacher there. If you just have faith in God. And them allergies will soon drive away and you won't be bothered with it anymore. Have faith in God. Do you do it? Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Now,
A lady sitting right back there has got heart trouble right behind a man with his hand up. She wants to be healed. She can be healed too. Do you believe, lady, and believe that God will make you well? You do? All right. Stand up to your feet. How many in here wants, how many all over the building wants to be healed? I'll tell you what you do then. I won't tell you. Now look, everybody wants to be healed, raise your hand way high. I just want you to see the Holy Spirit here. Now look, everybody with your hands up. Now look at somebody else who's got their hands up. And, and, and lay your hands over on the person. That, well, lay your hands on one another. Just lay your hands over on somebody near you. Oh, God. Oh, mercy. Over here, lay your hands on each other. All down through there. Somebody, just lay your, everybody's got their hand up. Somebody lay hands on them. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. The preacher, no, them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? I just, in your own simple way, let's just gather down and start praying. And while you're praying, I'm going to ask Jesus Christ, our Lord, to curse the devil that's bound you. You believe he'll do it? Come here, ministers, and come here, stand here with me. Everybody, look at this scene here. Look what's sitting here now. Be reverent everywhere now. Real reverent. Because demons will be turning loose here in a few minutes. It'll be a dangerous thing. Oh God, be merciful to these people. You see them, Lord, in the deep sincerity, they got their hands laid on each other. And they believe that you're here now. And I'm quoting your word tonight, Lord. You said these signs shall follow them and believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Amen. They've seen your spirit work down through this last week, Lord. Seeing the secrets of the hearts told, diseases of their bodies, yeah. seeing the power of the devil, make the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the cripples is laying bound up with arthritis, laying on cots and stretchers, get up and walk away. Oh! God. Till tonight there's not even one of the cases in the building. I thank thee, Lord, for thy power, and I now pray, as we as your living church tonight challenge the devil. We'll not let any Habite or Canaanite or anything else stand in our way. We're going forward in faith tonight, believing God's word that the angel of God's here to lead us. Now, Satan, you cruel, ungodly spirit, come out of the people in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Have faith. Keep believing. Amen. Yeah. Keep shutting with God now. Keep believing. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep believing. He's right by your side. The Holy Ghost is hanging right over you. Right now. The first one of you believes that you're healed. Stand up to your feet and say, praise God. The first, there's one. There's another. 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 That's right. That's right. Stand up and pray.